So while I was working in Revit, I was thinking about visualizing because it makes for great communication. And I was using two tools. I was using the ability to render inside Revit and the ability to link a model and render from inside 3D Studio Max. So the illustrations here show the original model, the Neil Schweitzer model. Um, in Revit, the elevation would have looked like this. You see the um, concrete block also used at the front door, a, a roof that looks kind of discontinuous, a view through to the garden that's blocked. Uh, you've got a, a raised, uh, the expression of where the workspace the kitchen is. Um, and the front door adjacent to the uh, outcrop of granite that's on the site, kind of like a Japanese tea house would have a rock grouping marking the entrance to the tea house. Wright used this existing granite rock to, uh, to mark the entry to the Usonian house. The site was assumed to be flat, uh, which it turns out, of course, it wasn't. But uh, that's what the original proposal would have looked like. Um, if I if I link the model and I bring it into 3D Studio Max, so maybe an FBX export as an FBX file, link it into Max, I can render it and this is what it would have looked like looking from the north side of the the site. Original comments from the neighbours were that it was a they they referred to it as the chicken coop because of the small one foot openings in the in the facade. Looking from further down the street, it would have looked like this. If I looked at it at night, the overhang has lights on the underside, so that the uh, this would have been the appearance from the north side of the site. Inside the house, thinking about the design grammar that was the same uh, grammar used for all the Usonian houses, you've got the four foot grid uh, on the concrete slab and the walls are placed either to be uh, the face on the line of the grid or the or the walls halfway between or a fixed unit like one foot or two foot or three foot from a grid line. Um, n not always a terribly satisfactory way of doing it when it's left to the contractor to uh, determine whether the wall is actually being centered or if it's the face of the wall that's being placed uh, maybe on, on something that looks like it might be halfway between two grid lines. The, there were two drawings that showed all the details for creating all of the, the uh, custom curtain wall. The Dabney house drawing was provided although there weren't sufficient details I just had to make up some parts in order to, to draft it in 3D. Um, a, a, brick where every fifth course would be 13 inches um, and a very thin partition wall that's made up of um, the same division of uh, cypress finish that originally was supposed to be tongue and groove but was cut without the tongue or the groove so it ended up being screwed to the, the the central core of the wall itself with with timber plugs to try and, and hide the connection. Uh, if I look in the inside of the building um, looking at the, from the entrance looking into the garden room you can see the two foot blocks initially uh, bookshelves running all the way around the interior if I go into that building, if I go into the garden room, you can see the planters. Notice that there is circulation between two of the piers that takes me around to a gallery area that you'll see in a second. And notice that the planter wall itself is set back from the face of the pier. If I look at that north wall and I can set a time for my shadow so I can say this is winter solstice 19.53 p.m. in the afternoon and I can see how much sunlight I would get penetrating into the room itself. If I look back towards the kitchen area, the gallery area, dining was placed immediately in front of the fireplace. The, this is not a very wide space, there's not enough space and it's changed later. 
freestanding sink um, shelving to show up work, works of art um, and kind of stepping back from it a bit you can s initially the false ceiling was open um, you get an, a sense of what the inside space would have looked like um, at night a little more like this if the lights are on outside and a few lights in the room uh, looking at the planters uh, French doors I don't know what the plan was for maintaining the plants if the doors are opening and closing and and damaging plant material but that was their original proposal that was changed later uh, planters set back so the idea was the continuity between indoors and outdoors by having plants that ran all the way up to the the curtain wall looking at that dining and gallery area again um, it's got built-in seating the south patio a very a four foot gap between the the screen doors that would open in the way and the uh, gallery area that's indicated on the the plans itself the Zimmerman's collected local pottery and uh, major works of art and sculpture and th I think the idea was that this might be used as a display area for that Uh, the furniture is used in many of the Usonian buildings and I recreated all of the furniture to use in the, in the house itself. The south patio, uh, you get an idea of the outside space, the, the continuity and the rhythm of the, the, uh, the French doors on that facade and a little bit of how much the uh, master bedroom looks uh, very very small and the ceiling height is getting to be a bit of a problem because you can only go so far with the single slope without the ceiling coming right down to your head level. In fact if you look at it there and you remember that the site isn't actually flat the ground level would run along like this somewhere to this corner and then drop till it reaches the patio that's where it, it actually is. Um, I can take the roof off and look at it and see all of the arrangements inside. Um, the carport, by the way, was never big enough to house a car. Uh, the second visualization then is of the, the after Jack Howard cleaned this up. You can see the roof becomes more continuous, the kitchen area gets larger, the entrance becomes less dominant. It's now a brick pier with a curtain wall opening. Um, there's the introduction of uh, clear story in the to light the uh, the workspace area. Uh, there's the fact that the the curtain walls are no longer continuous when you go out to the patio, and you no longer have the dining in front of the fireplace, but you have the garden room extended to include all of the piers and you walk around to the front of the workspace to get to the dining area itself. Um, if I look at this the front entrance now looks less prominent. Still got wood shakes on the roof. If we look at the uh, the drawing itself, the drawing shows 16 inch precast windows where originally they were two foot and I, would, I don't know if that was a drafting mistake or whether it was that they were actually thinking about it. Kind, kind of interesting because shortly after this they start to do the automat the Usonian automatics which are made of uh, precast concrete blocks. Now, now I've got a, a low ceiling o o over the entrance with uh, lights in it but notice it doesn't extend into the the garden room itself. I've got built-in seating that's low in height below the bookshelves and then as I move into the living room, that uh, the, the garden room, this is uh, what the two foot blocks would look like with the built-in seating. Notice the built-in seating is of modules of two feet so it fits with the four foot module on the floor. And If I look at it as 16 inch windows then they look like that. So here's the two foot and then here's the 16 inch. Uh, no real c 
clear idea about how situations like this are going to be reconciled. I, I can't imagine that we're going to have individual precast blocks to meet these conditions where there, there's a sloping roof. Uh, looking back, you can see that the house got a, a good deal wider. There's now more space for the workspace behind the fireplace. Uh, dining has moved. Notice that the planters, now the walls were flush, um, which kind of diminishes from the the desire to show the visual connection between the indoors and the outdoors, uh, with the emphasis on that direction coming from the long face of the piers. The gallery has now gone, so there's no walking between the piers to get to the dining area. And this is what the dining area would have looked like with the Jack Howe proposal. Um, again, the, the, the glass, uh, as it turns the corner, not, not really as, as uh, nicely detailed as the finished building was. The, there's this still mix of uh, timber frame and, and glass on, the, on that corner. The final model, this is the two changes actually, the front entrance and this cutout were actually um, proposed by uh, Neil Schweitzer and then John Geiger took over the design of the building. Notice that the, the view now to the garden has been improved because the block has been removed from the carport. There's additional storage and some planting area here. There originally was a, a tree in this planter that subsequently died. The roof is one continuous roof instead of looking like it's two separate roofs. Um, the, this cutout improves greatly the, the light in the, this part of the building. Um, and there's now the acknowledgement that, yeah, you know what, the site is actually definitely sloping and uh, that's uh, clear in a way that the build the guest areas sunk into the site itself. So if I look at the views here, this would be looking from the 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 north. You see the still the small two foot windows. Still the originally the wood shakes, although these were changed later. Um, at night it would look something more like that. Um, you've now got a continuation of the false ceiling as you move from the compressed space, the six foot eight, um, and on a concession they moved it to six foot nine uh, because M Mr. Zimmerman was not a small man. And uh, the lights now continue to join one space to the other. You can kind of see the pattern picked up in the one foot module of the, the window. Where there was this connection to the outdoors, they put in a triangular window with an, with an opening uh, side here for to try and improve ventilation. The seats themselves now have a high back instead of stopping low down. They're now, they're now uh, extending all the way up to the underside of the of the uh, the precast, can precast concrete window. There's also an opening on the brick wall here where they put glass culls with a light behind them, a feature that, they, that was also used in the Palmer House which was built shortly after this one. So if I come into the living room, it's now changed in its appearance. Um, I put in some of the hexagonal tables. The tables were made like modules so you could move them together to make a seating for a large number of people or move them apart for smaller gatherings. Um, I, can, I can see the 13 inch module represented by the heights of the display area here beside the fireplace. Um, it's a little hard to see, but they notice that the line of the grid is actually picked up by breaking the lintel at this point. And the same thing happens on the the um, the, uh, the sills that are used on the top of the, uh, the planter area. They've now been set back again to where the emphasis is definitely kind of north-south in terms of views. And the, the area of the false ceiling is now closed in, so you can't see it. That, that, that actually shows it a lot clearer the way that the line of the grid is picked up in the line of a, a lintel. This is the corner that was developed for the glass turn. Um, much, much cleaner and, and more interesting than what was there before. Um, the windows have now been changed from being uh, 
French windows to being uh, hung windows that um, don't interfere with the planting and let you ventilate the, the space on the south side. The dining area now looks like this. We're looking back, seeing the planter and seeing the, uh, the garden area. And the master bedroom has now, the whole house has now been changed to where it's more like a inverted L shape um, where the short leg of the L is the master bedroom and it now has a roof that turns a corner and projects a, a gable out into the garden itself. Um, also because of the fire department the, the roof changed from wood shakes to red tile got heavier and so they had to incorporate some steel into the roof to carry the extra weight. To the south side of the building here you can see what the facade would look like. And so some kind of quick summary images here if you watch the change there's the original to that to that and to that is the final house so if I go back Now the reason I did this was that Wright would often say that he, uh, he shook the designs out of his sleeve and all I'm trying to show is that actually there was continuous change and improvements in the design with a lot of input from the apprentices as you would get in any design office. So first chart, the revised scheme, another revision and then the final project as executed by John Geiger. If I go to the other side, you can see the carport area and master bedroom, assuming the site was flat, which it isn't, so it changes to this. Also notice that the roof changes direction. This was just to show the, the small, small size uh, window. And then nearly done, and then a final revision that goes like that to finish the design. North side again, the cutout on the roof, the final design. One more on the south side, the patio doors, French doors opening, small kitchen area. Now uh, disrupted pattern, uh, clear story lighting, um, turning of the roof, the working towards the final design but still with the French doors. This is still with Neil, Neil Schweitzer's first attempt at the, uh, the construction documents and then John Geiger uh, finishing them off with something that looks more like this. Actually more like that, that's the, that's the finish one. Okay, so I'm gonna stop there and I'm gonna show some more movies.